And we have started recording. We also have everyone present for the first item. Great, thank you. Well, if everyone's present for the first item and we're recording, we can actually get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the Salt Lake City Planning Division's Appeals hearing uh, this afternoon, this evening. Um, my name is Matt Worth, I'm one of the city's uh, appeal, he appeals hearing officers. Tonight, we have uh, two matters before us, two variance requests, um, and we'll hear uh, the, the, in, in the following order. The first um, matter will be the variance request for an accessory structure at uh, 615 East 7th Avenue. Um, David Richardson representing the property owner. Uh, this is PLN ZAD 2023 triple or 00552 is, is the number on that. Following uh, that, uh, this that particular matter will hear about the property variance request on Church Hill Drive. And I understand the parties are here and available and so uh looks like mr richardson are there you looks like you may be there with the property owner i'll, I'll turn some time at the time initially over to you uh and if you'll just introduce yourself uh for, for the record and ag again just to and i this is not meant to be condescending i know um david i'm sure you've had lots of experience here as well um you know, we uh, in, a, in a variance matter, um, uh, it, it's important that the, the the property owner, the burden is on the property owner to show that the request meets uh, the statutory standards set forth in in city code, and I and that's kind of what I'm. I've got boundaries under which I can uh, it, it issue this variance, and so. Um, obviously, the most helpful information will be speaking to, to, to those variance standards and how it's applied in these this particular matter. So anyway, we'll uh, give you whatever uh, time uh, you need. I may have some questions along the way, and, and then we'll give a chance for uh, anybody in the city uh, to, uh, to respond um, or to provide additional information for me. And then I'll let uh, uh, the uh, applicant provide any final uh, comments or a response to anything the city said. And, and so this meant just to be a, a, a conversation. And so uh, certainly um, ask any questions along the way. But without uh, further ado, uh, David, if uh, you want to take over, uh, thanks for being here. You bet. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, and thank you for explaining the format of tonight's meeting. Um, with me is the owner, Wayne Rossberg, here on my left. And between us is our project architect, Jody Bell, uh, who's been communicating with Trevor. Um, in a nutshell, I mean, the goal here, of course, is to be able to build a garage on an existing parking structure. And um, we think there are one of two routes that the city can take to approve this. And I think Wayne will do a very good job of explaining this. Um, and as part of this, uh, Wayne has produced a rebuttal letter, which we forwarded to Trevor this afternoon. You may or may not have received that, but it is something I think you will ultimately have to take under your advisement. Great, thank you. And then just for your record, I have not yet received it, but I'm confident I will, and and will certainly uh, officially make that part of of the record that I'll take under advisement. Thank, thank you. you. Well, what we'd like to do here is just to give you some high points from that, not dive into it. So um, I'm going to share our screen and um, and turn um, the floor to Wayne. So here we go. Uh, this one. And this is what everyone can see out there on the World Wide Web. So on the left here, we have um, the subject property. And um, this is a parking pad and retaining walls that were installed 
in the 90s, and um, they have been, uh, they have footings and foundations under them and are ready to put a, basically a roof over it. Um, and uh, neighboring, fan, the property line, of course, is to the right here, about a foot away on the fence. And as you can see in the site plan, the house in back is, is relatively, is a little closer than it is allowed today. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Wayne. This is Wayne's uh, letter. Um, and we're going to probably start with the 1993 zoning um, ordinance right here. <clears throat> Okay, the, in 1993, I requested a variance uh, for a more expansive project, part of which was granted and part was denied. During the hearing on that uh, variance request, I was told as a part of the executive session of the board that the location of the parking pad, which had been arrived at by the members of the board along with the city zoning administrator, um, that I, if, a, if constructed, that I would be able to, in the future, place a carport or a garage on that structure. Um, the question has been raised about whether or not that is indeed the case. Um, there's no record of those comments being made because it was made in the executive session, which were not recorded, although they were stated uh, in to the hearing at large uh, in front of the audience and whatever. So it's not like they were secret, but no one recalls them. There's no record of them. The, it, uh, Trevor sent a copy of the ordinance from 1993, the section pertaining to driveways, which is displayed on the screen. And the pertinent sections here are H and I, uh, H it is informative in that it discusses garages and parking areas as synonymous. And it describes the attitude of the city at the time about parking. And in fact, the very restrictive view that parking was only permitted on an appropriately located parking pad or in a garage in the backyard and that parking was not permitted on the driveway that led to that parking structure. The, the, the issue at, at hand is, well, was the statement about being able to put a garage on, built on top of this parking pad, uh, was it? in fact, correct? Is it uh, supported in either the record that the statement was made or in the code? And I believe that section I indeed state, you know, answers that question. Yes, it was in the code. Whereas er elsewhere in this uh, section, when they talk about a, a parking pad or a garage, they're talking about them both. In I, they just mentioned garage. Uh, and give the requirements that it be 15 feet away from the residents on the adjacent property, 10 feet away from my residents. And the parking pad as it was arrived at by the board and the zoning administrator does not meet that because it's closer than 15 feet to the neighboring house. When I went in to get the permit, the zoning administrator was asked me, is it within, uh, is it 15 feet away from the neighbor? And I said, well, no, it's only 10. And he then looked at it and said, well, 
we we can just do an administrative variance to make it just 10 feet to re to relieve you of the burden of having to do it 15 feet away. And so that's what led to a variance that was issued in 1993, the end of 1993, which um, we've included that here. Yes, yeah. it's, it's this. And yeah. Th this is in several different doc in documents. Yes. So, yeah. anyway, it, it, so continue. Yeah. So if one reads this, the variance is, you know, for relief of that 15 foot requirement. Uh, and for a parking pad. Uh, and it's interesting to note that it's been questioned that, well, where is it that, that there's a connection between the parking pad and, and the garage? Uh, and I think if you look at this, you'll find that both the Back ordinance and the variance, if you look at the language of the variance, it makes it clear that they were treated as synonymous in that if they were not, if the parking pad could have been put there um, in less than 15 feet and the garage required 15 feet, then why is a variance for the parking pad explicitly stating relief from the 15 foot requirement? In other words, the requirements in I for a garage are exactly the requirements that the variance establishes. It relieves the 15-foot requirement, making it only 10. And in all other respects, the distinction between a garage and a pad are immaterial. At that time, it was in 93. Okay. So that... I think that's a solid argument using the 1993 or, uh, ordinance. And then uh, should we move on to the other? Yes. Okay, the other one is actually quite interesting. Um, going back up to here, our current ordinance, we're going to focus on this paragraph here and Wayne will explain this. Yeah, the, in the existing so the current existing zoning ordinance is this paragraph shown on the screen. And it essentially is a, a grandfather clause, if you will, saying that if a, an auxiliary or a, a, an accessory structure is constructed and is later uh, because of an addition to the primary structure is now not in compliance with the spacing and whatever else, that it does not have to be removed. It is allowed to stay. What's interesting about this is that the situation we're talking about here reflects that in, in a couple of different ways. From the existing configuration, the existing parking pad, the existing house, the existing addition on the back, there are two ways of getting to the desired configuration. That is a garage on top of the existing parking pad. One is, well, a variance, which is what we applied for, or the other is, okay, Tear off the addition on the back. Now the proposed garage is fully behind the back of the house. The addition was, was not part of the original house. It was a replacement for an older addition, uh, which was also not part of the original house. Now, if you build the garage, which is now perfectly fine, which requires no variance, nothing uh, extra that needs to be done. You just simply build the garage on the existing parking pad. Now you go back and you add on the addition. This paragraph shown here allows that configuration to stay. It's all legal. All the steps along the way are valid. You can actually build a bigger addition. <laughs> yes, in fact, that's true. Mm -hmm. And the only requirement is that the garage 
the accessory building be four feet away from the lateral face of the, the primary structure, and that it be 10 feet away from the neighboring uh, residential structure of the, uh, of the budding property. That's all it requires. Now, what you've got is two ways of resolving this. One is to require nothing special, no appeals, no variance, no nothing. Simply tear it off, build the new, and then put it back on. <laughs> Which sounds ludicrous. Yep. But it's a vehicle to get there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and, and the other is, is simply to, well, permit... G given that this pad is legally there, there was a permit to put it there. There was a variance that um, uh, allowed it to be permitted to put it there. It is there now, but I can't get a permit to put the garage there without a variance. So, And if you don't give me the variance, well, I could still have what I want. Yep. But it was that ludicrous bit <laughs> of tearing it off, building it, and putting it back on. So, the the uh, I observed then from this that this ordinance is inconsistent, at least in this regard. Okay, so we provided here two primary options. One is to affirm the, the nine, 1993 variance that is indeed still valid and the implications that that has. And the other is to simply treat this as though the garage and the parking pad were synonymous as they were in 93, or at least we argue they were in 93, and let us build it there just by allowing us to get a permit. No variance required, nothing else. Just give us the permit <laughs> and acknowledge the fact that the 1993 variance is still in effect. That's okay. Nice yep. And the other is this this vehicle here. So um, I'm going to stop the share here. Well, we can leave this open. Um, we'll uh, turn the floor uh, back over to you, Matt. Thank, thank you very much. Um, and I'll, uh, looking now to, to the city uh, is uh, if uh, who will be providing some input and response from the city, if any. Trevor? Sure. Yep, so that'll be me. Great. So, Thanks. yeah, like uh, Mr. Rosberg mentioned, I got this document just a few hours ago, so I haven't really had the time to dig into it really do any analysis on it. Um, so in my staff report, in my analysis of this request, I really just focused on the standards that are outlined in the code. So, you know, based on that, the request doesn't really meet most of the, the standards that are in the code now. So, and as you're, as I'm sure you're aware, you know, the variance requests, we need to stick to the standards that are in the code. So that's what I reviewed it to them against and yeah, unfortunately, we found that they don't meet most of them. If you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, I do have a short presentation, it's really just summarize what's in the staff report, but I think we kind of went over the key information already. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Trevor. Yeah, I don't think there's a need to uh, review what's in the staff report. I've I've read that and internalized. I do. Uh, uh, j just would would uh, appreciate just your 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 input. I I understand, um, you know, just from the straight up application for the variance and and your assertion that the uh, request uh, did 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 not meet the the, the code requirements. I any response? Um, and it, um, j just. Uh, for the record, I and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but with respect to the first path uh, that Mr. Rosberg um, mentioned uh, to somehow recognize 
the, the, the variance, but would you just kind of summarize the city's view of, of that argument in, in particular? I think the second argument I, I think is new and, and and recognizing you haven't had a chance to to analyze that as uh, as well and, and and just for the record too given that this came in a later hour certainly uh allow any further analysis from the city if they care to respond to this additional um uh language as well for the record but uh, can you just respond to the first path that i think it was mentioned in the staff report um why the why the city cannot recognize that there was some promise made in a meeting i think you're on mute trevor sorry oh great thank you we all do that <laughs> yeah yep definitely um sure so yeah the 1993 variance so for that one that was approved um that information that we have up there, that is, that's, you know, we've got Mr. Rossberg's application that has all of his submittal information. Um, for the city, though, we have that document. I think you were just on it. That's really all the information we have on it. Um, I did, I did, you know, I did as much research as I could, all the resources we have available here. And nothing, you know, there was nothing definitive that corroborates that verbal confirmation was given or that it would have been allowed. Um, and just looking at the, what was approved, it was specifically for a parking pad, nothing about a garage. The code now would allow a parking pad in that location without a variance, but would not allow a garage. So the current code does differentiate the two. So that's how we are looking at it now. And, and, and so is it the city's, uh, again, just to confirm and, and dial down a little bit, um, is, is it the city's position then that simply a statement, and I guess the question is, what can we do anything? There's an alleged statement made by somebody who said, oh, yeah, you'll be able to build a garage. But I'm, are, are you aware of uh, how, how that if that can be recognized at all, I mean, if it's not in writing, is there anything that we can do with that? Not that I know of. Yeah. My R is on here. If she's got a, anything else relevant to that, but I, I don't think so. Okay. No, yeah. If we don't have that documented, we go by the language that we can find in the minutes. Um, and it, it didn't reference a garage. Um, yeah. We we believe that they would have mentioned a structure if the intent was to allow a structure, but we can't tell for sure. I mean, we weren't around at the time, so um, sure. yeah. For the record, okay. Mayor yeah. Lima is the acting zoning administrator. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. That that's uh, you know that's that that's very helpful. Um, uh david wayne uh, uh anything else in response to that or anything final uh to, to let us know obviously again we'll take your the, the the document you provided and and i did open the door if the city wants to provide any kind of response that we'll share but we'll we'll take all of that uh and consider it part of the record that i'll take under advisement but uh, again just from a, a conclusion or airy standpoint Anything you'd like to add? Well, I would just reiterate the, 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 the four words that we've highlighted here on the screen in uh, this grayish blue color, that in 1993, it, it appears that paragraph H um, lumps garage or parking area in the same, that they're there literally in the same sentence. I just wanted to bring that back to your attention. Um, I don't think we have anything else to add. But I, I would uh, point you to the um, section five of the rebuttal document and option 1B, which is, okay, if you don't believe the garage and the parking pad are synonymous, then there's another aspect of that variance 
which is that all of the conditions that you require for a variance were explicitly stated there as having been met for that variance to, to be granted at that time. In 1993. In 1993. Mm -hmm. The requirements for a variance were the same then as they are now. In and here you have a, a member of the city staff saying, we judge this request as being compliant. On all of the eight issues that you have in your uh, report, So, and, and Wayne outlines that quite well in, in his rebuttal, um, as he mentioned in section five, it's actually, the, the rebuttal is fairly well organized. It's section 5.1.2, and he uh, uh, has uh, bullet points, eight bullet points that uh, relate uh, to the present staff report. And at the end, uh, in the attachments to Wayne's uh, rebuttal, he has outlined uh, the same bullet points are noted uh, uh, adjacent to the staff report uh, paragraphs that are relevant. So it's it's there. It is. Thank you. And can I just say, Wayne, th thank you very much for the very well organized uh, 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 response and rebuttal. That that's very helpful uh, as I as I go through the materials. One one question I have and. Um, uh, you know, obviously it's too bad that the garage or the structure wasn't built back in 93 once you had this variance. It is, I assume it was just a matter of timing and cost and everything else as to why it never was was built. Uh, is, that, is that accurate? Well, yes. The, and the, the reason it's being sought now is, well, it's being sought to house a vintage car. And I could never afford to have the car restored when I was younger, just as I could not afford to put the garage on the parking pad when I was younger. But I can do both of those now and would like to do both of those. The car it's is good. and the garage, that's up to you. <laughs> and may I just intervene uh, really fast? Um, Wayne did keep that permit open from about 1993 until 2016, uh, doing the work. So uh, I, I believe it was 2016, it may have been 2018, it's in the document. Uh, so the permit was inspected every six months, he kept up with fees and he kept the permit active with that variance, at which point we only closed it out to consolidate in a new single permit with uh, finishing up some of the work. So he's always kept this active and open Although it would have been great if you could have done it 30 years ago. <laughs> sure, um, sure. Yeah. Really ever since. Okay. That's helpful. It's completely irrelevant for the record, but just curious, Wayne, what uh, type of vintage car is it? It's a 1970 Mach 1. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's great. See my email address. It will ring a bell. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. For the record, the rebuttal has been added to your Dropbox, Mr. Worthen. Thank you very, very much. Don't we love modern day technology? Don't have to wait for, for the U.S. Postal Service a few days to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Thank you for, for your time, for your work on, on this, both uh, from the uh, owner applicant uh, as well as the city. Obviously, I'll take all of this under under advisement, and and uh, we'll get out a uh, written decision. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, Matt. One yes. more thing. Yes. Oh, it's it's it is a public, public hearing. hearing. Minor, minor detail. Uh, I I apologize. Uh, thank you very very much. So with 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 that, we will open it up for public comments. Uh, do do we have anybody in the public that would wish to uh, speak to this issue? I see no raised hands. Okay. So seeing none, uh, I will close the public hearing. Uh, and again, thank everyone for your participation. And just uh, again, by way of, uh, of summary, we'll take this under advisement.
uh, will issue, will review the additional materials received today and provide a written decision uh, as soon as possible. Hopefully next week, but don't hold me to it. But that's that's the that's the hope. And uh, so thank you very thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. I really really appreciate your time and Myra and uh, and Trevor as well. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Have thank a good night. You. Thank good you. Night. Bye. Okay. We will be moving Megan Booth and Mark Ibrahim over into the panelist position. Mark, do you have the ability to turn on your video? There we yeah. go. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to our second uh, item on the agenda tonight. This is a variance hearing for a public hearing for a six foot fence and gate in the front yard uh, located at uh, 22 East uh, Churchill Drive. Um, and uh, the request is is by Mark Ibrahim, the property owner, for uh, a six foot fence uh, and gate in the front yard area. Um, this is uh, case number PLNZAD 2023 00522. Um, Mr. Ibrahim, thank you very, very much for, for being here. And I'll turn uh, any time over to you a again. Just just so you know, I have uh, both uh, read everything in the staff report uh, and also visited the property just driven by. Uh, just it's helpful to get that perspective, even though the pictures are are wonderful. Um, so anyway, just wanted to give you that 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 background. So if it, if it's in the staff report, but again. Uh, I think you may have heard from the last matter. It's it's really helpful again to focus on the standards set forth in uh, that provide for a variance. Uh, I, I'm pretty limited to uh, to what's in the statute, uh, and and each one of those uh, elements has to be met for a variance to be issued, it is a high bar. But uh, again, I just, just wanted to uh, reiterate that for purposes of our discussion. But uh, Mark, I'll turn uh, whatever time you need and uh, then we'll give the city a chance for a response and then conclude with anything you might have to say. And again, there, there may be questions along the way uh, as well. So we can just have a discussion. No, thank you, Matt. Really appreciate the time and giving me the opportunity. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, sounds great. Okay. Thank you. Loud and clear. No, and I appreciate that you coming on site and taking a look as well. Um, so in, in summary, and I I would be really brief here, is the the the, the thing that we are we're uh, kind of concerned about is we wanted to do a a, a see-through aluminum fence around the property and secure it because of multiple reasons and wildlife, uh, prior intruders activity and um, safety concern for myself and the family. And we encounter a situation where um, the driveway is about four and a half foot below the street level. And uh, we were advised that we're not allowed to do more than four foot in the front in the, house, the front of the house or the driveway. And we have all intention to comply with whatever the city, however, this was actually news to us because most of the neighborhood houses here were six foot in the front, 360 around the house. So we believe just like this is an aerial view here of the house. And we believe the house has a unique topography that is not present in other houses in the neighborhood. And that creates a security vulnerability and challenge where, as you can uh, see in here, this is the Churchill Street, this is the driveway. And I measured this distance here, it's about four and a half foot. So, and this is the line that we intend to put the uh, double gate here on. And having the gate at the four feet height it will actually just help pedestrian to just come in, step on the top edge and jump inside the house. So it would really not secure it. And that is causing significant um, 
concern to me and i believe it's related to the property and not something that we created and um, as a result we're requesting a variance here we had prior uh, issues with uh, wildlife and i indicated um incidents where my poor two-year-old son encountered this uh, uh, coyote on the patio at some point and, uh, and oh my gosh that's amazing so he was he was there the coyote was right in front of him yeah, he was actually on this side here and, and he started screaming and we felt like maybe he fell. But then the coyote, I think, was injured and he ran away. Oh, <laughs> but, thankfully. But, but it, it, it was a it was significant hardship for him. Poor guy. And um, oh, I'm, so, I'm so glad he's OK. <laughs> yeah, he is. But uh, so that was a real thing. In the backyard, there's also significant damage from the wild activity from the deer. And we just felt like securing the property would be the best uh, option for us. But we're just being challenged by this unique topography where putting a four foot gate and a fence here may not secure it. You may We may argue that maybe having the six foot gate and attached to a four foot fence here might do the job and I'm open for any you know, suggestion or, or compromise or that, but I just believe this aesthetically and from a security standpoint that does not make sense here because of this challenge. And looking into properties in the same neighborhood, I, I realized some, they have different challenges though, but they all were, you know, uh, instruct, uh, constructed as a six foot gates and fences in the same street that we are at. So now I don't want to- Mark, can I interrupt you? Just, I, I, I am curious about that and obviously troubled because, you know, it, it, I, I'm with you. It doesn't seem very fair when, if, if like your neighbors have this yeah. and you're going through the process and asking for it, but, but, but can't have it. Do you have any idea when 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 these were all installed by your by your neighbors, are these relatively new, or have they been there for twenty years? Do you have any sense of that? Yeah, uh, I I was told they have been there about twenty years plus. Like, okay, okay, they were original, and um, we were told, just in all honesty, that this neighborhood did not require a permit because it was supposed to be an HOA and they have already kind of a semi-private street here where the city sign where this is a private street but that was I think the common knowledge where people would just do the fence without the I don't know but that's what I was told and unfortunately I wanted to do it the right way but now I'm encountering this challenge and I hope you guys will consider all the factors here and from a safety and neighborhood standpoint, I think this promotes safety and it does not obstruct views of anyone and neither like the traffic here, it's a see-through fence that will be fairly semi-visible, like it's not really obstructing anything. And um, this is really my uh, highlights is, um, we believe the unique topography creates the security challenge that is causing um, emotional uh, hardship on me and the family. And uh, we believe having an exemption here would allow us to secure the property and maintain the aesthetic and the value without even compromising on the neighbors. And also that gives us justice similar to other neighbors who've been enjoying their 360 secure property for 20 years plus. Mark, Mark, can I, can I have you drill down a little bit? Um... And just again, for purposes of of the record, to make sure I understand, and you 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 do refer to the unique topography, and I I just want to make sure I understand how you would articulate that that uniqueness um, again, because obviously your neighboring properties also are on a you know a, a slope. And, you you know, I mean, the, the nature of that entire neighborhood, you're you're building on a slope. And so you have differing elevations to, to, to sort of manage and deal with. And, and when, when you say that ours is particularly unique, and that's obviously a critical one of one of the uh, issues uh, for variance, I just want to make sure you articulate that so I understand how, how it is unique and different, uh, given that you're all sort of dealing with, the, again, the slope issues there. 
So the unique component of it is it is below the driveway is far below the street level and it is about four and a half feet below the street level. Most of the like actually all the houses in the neighborhood, we can tell the driveway is above the street level. And that's where this property, as you can see in this aerial view, kind of sits on the on the intersection here and the driveway literally below the street level. And I felt that was a unique challenging circumstances here. Okay, that's that's helpful. I know you you said that. I just want to make sure yeah. I understood your argument fully there. Okay. And then when I put the gate here, it just it created this this gap here where I was troubled by solving it. Sure, sure. Okay, that's that's very helpful, Mark. Thank you. If unless you have anything else, uh, I'll have the, the the city with with any response again. And from the city standpoint, understanding I've, uh, you know, read through and reviewed the entire staff report and and everything. But if they'd like to summarize or provide a response or just provide some input, one one question I do have for them, Megan, if, and I don't know if you can, you can answer this. Um, and, and I realize it's somewhat tangential a little bit, but I am curious uh, with these larger fences. That, that that were provided in the in the surrounding properties uh, that seem to be fairly common in this neighborhood. Do you and and, and one of, one of the arguments in the staff report that that is made frequently is, um, you know, this would set a precedent. This would be bad for the neighborhood because it would allow everyone else to do it. Well, it appears that everyone else has already done it. And this may not be much of a precedent setting. And, and so I, if, if you could, uh, among all of your comments, um, sort of address that. And, and the answer may be, you know, gee, that it wasn't an issue 20 years ago when these were built. And so um, it's it's a newer requirement. And that's just kind of the luck of the uh, or, or the bad luck, if you will, that that, that has changed. But uh, it, it, anyway, if you wouldn't mind addressing that, Megan, that would be great. And I'll stop talking now. <laughs> sure, not a problem. I'm happy to address it. I did go ahead and check the adjacent property for a building permit, and I wasn't able to find one in our system. Um, but that may be because building permits were not required for fences in the Foothill and Historic Districts until the early 2000s. Um, but there's really not a lot to point to. Um, the zoning code was amended in the early 2000s to require a building permit for a fence um, in all zoning districts. However, even though uh, he, there were not building permits, they were still required to comply with the fence height regulations. Um, so it's definitely difficult to determine the legality of the fences built prior to the permits you know, when I'm unable to find any historical record for that. Um, and then uh, uh, there used to be a process called uh, special exceptions. And through this process, a property owner could obtain approval for fences um, that exceeded the allowable height, but that was adop um, adopted an ordinance in 2021 to eliminate that special exception process. So, um, you know, eliminating the opportunity of obtaining additional fence height. So um, that's really the background. I have to try to answer that question. I mean, it. I was trying to find an answer to that as well. Um, that's and, actually, that's, that's very helpful. In fact, I'm I'm glad you brought up the special exception because that that was a lot of these issues would have been in the past prior to 2021 would have been dealt with in the special exception way, and so. That, that was a policy decision that the city council decided, you know what, we think, uh, at least if I remember right, you know, we think it's too big of a loophole, too many people are taking advantage of this, it's creating too many, too many exceptions to the zoning, and, and I think a lot of, a lot of people were unhappy with that, and so they just did away with that, which has correspondingly increased the number of variancy requests, which raises the standard of uh, that you have to meet to, to, to get that. So that, that, that's all just kind of past history, but that's helpful to understand, Megan. Thank you for explaining that. You're welcome. And, um, just, you've read the staff reports, my recommendation, um, based on 
what I could find with the standards of approval was um, to deny the request. Um, I did work with the property owner, Mark, and we tried to find a common solution to meet the code um, without going for, for the variance, but um, he has provided his reasons for wanting to do so. So that's all the comments I have. Thank you. Does your analysis, I, I know the answer, but I'll ask it. Well, maybe I don't, but that's why I'm asking. Uh, 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 the property owners sort of offer it a, a compromise, if you will, was, well, maybe we live with a four foot fence, but have the six foot gate, maybe that would be better than nothing um, or just the four foot fence at all. Does that change your analysis if you're looking at just the, the 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 fence or the gate does that change any of your analysis Megan it wouldn't because it's still above the height allowed in the front yard area I do feel that there's other ways to mitigate um, that that gap that he has whether that be with trees landscaping shrubbery you know boulders the bolt you know, to block that I think there's um, the minimum necessary would be what transportation suggested, which was what would meet OSHA requirements to protect that sidewalk and the driveway below. Um, so I would say, I wouldn't say it would. Um, Mayara is also on the call and she can chime in if she thinks that would change her view, but yeah. No, that was, that was a good answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Megan. Any, anything else that you wanted to address? No, not, not at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Mark, back to you. Any any final either re rebuttal or final comments or, or, or thoughts? Um, yeah, absolutely. Megan, appreciate your input here, but uh, I, I really believe a boulder or a shrubbery here to uh, prevent an intruder or a deer it is not a feasible uh, option. It's going to be aesthetically, uh, um, you know, compromising the property value, and the, and the way it looks. And also, I, it just um, you, I just invite you guys put yourself in my position. I uh, I try to be a good citizen and follow the rules and submit a permit, and now I'm being deprived from a privilege that all my neighbors enjoy in because. They did not have to go through the paperwork, regardless of what the the, the laws were in the past. I I believe there's gonna be some um, equitable option or justice here, where because I could have done this, you know, in a week and nobody knew about it and just live with it, but I wanted to get it right. I wanted to go through the rules because I'm a rule follower and I just believe the city should, you know, take into consideration that. I feel the injustice here. I feel I'm kind of personally being dismissed by just rule, 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 but the rule didn't apply to six houses in the neighborhood. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. Um, I, you know, I, I am uh, sympathetic and, and, and feel your pain and, and, uh, you know, appreciate you going through, uh, you know, this, this, this process and, um, I, uh, um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have all the information of how those other fences, you know, got got put up or what the circumstances were. Um, and but but, uh, uh, you know, uh, he, here we are and, and all of that is somewhat irrelevant as far as you have the request uh, be, before us. So um, I will uh, take all of this under advisement and issue my written opinion next week. Uh, once I've had a chance to make sure I internalize everything and what I've heard, to, heard, heard tonight. So uh, again, thank you. Uh, this is for, also for... a public hearing. Sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, you would think I would remember that from the last, the last time. So we, we are going to open it up for public hearing. Uh, is there anyone uh, uh, in the public who would like to uh, share any uh, thoughts or comments uh, to this particular matter before us tonight? No hands are raised. No hands are raised. So hearing none and seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. 
so grateful for people who know what they're doing. Thanks for keeping me on on, on track tonight. Uh, as as stated before, I'll I'll take this under advisement. Issue a written opinion next next week. And again, uh, Mark, glad your son is okay from the coyotes and. Uh, uh, appreciate you coming to the city to try to figure out a, a, a solution. Again, I'm bound by what's in the code, uh, but uh, we'll take all this under advisement and issue my opinion next week. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Have a good night. Good night. So that it concludes our appeals hearing this evening. Thank you.